Okay, so in my 17 years in IT industry, I've been working on product development. I've worked on Drupal for the last 10 years or more, and UI design, DevOps, product management, of all of which, the toughest thing I had to do was walk into a meat shop and talk to a butcher and help him cut his meat better. And me being a vegetarian was the toughest thing for me to do. <laughs> the question is why? Why had to do it? For a year ago, I was called upon uh, into the executive management office and said, Subu, we have seven butchers on board the cruise ship and on an average. If they could cut the meat better and we know where the meat goes, that will save us millions of dollars. Millions. So I was like, wow, <laughs> I never realized it. And then the question is why? We run in Princess Cruises across our 17 ships more than 250 restaurants. 250 restaurants of which 51 unique chains, which is the same restaurant in multiple ships. And on an average day per ship, we serve more than 15,000 meals a day in one ship times 17. So that's the problem we are trying to attempt. Let me show you one quick video. It's a 10 second video of what happens in the galley. So it is a formal night where we have the waiters coming up to pick up the appetizer. It's one side of the galley trying to serve for more than 1,000 people as a one minute one. This is the waiters coming and picking up appetizers. That's one. It's not even main food. So this is the busiest restaurant. We feed around 4,000 people within that period of two hours, the dinner. With this scale, time 17, on a given month, we give out or we make 1.1 million slices of pizza, 1.1 million. And let's think about soda, 51,000 gallons of soda a month. And my favorite, cookies, 1 million cookies that we bake on board. And uh, healthy side, bananas, 220,000 pounds of banana. And ice cream is enough to fill an Olympic-sized pool. <laughs> That's the size of operation. But for the last 50 years, for a decade, I mean 55 decades, they have been managing all of this because we had, as I said, 250 restaurants. We had so many menus. And we manage over 300 menus all on board for all, managing all the ships. Now for creating all this food, because food is big in cruise ships, we have over 3,000 ingredients that's been kept and monitored. Plus the food, because ships are traveling around the world, we have to carry it and buy it from around 500 ports. So there's a logistical problem to get food items and of course other things too, but in, in mainly food, 500 plus ports. Now all of this, all of this is managed for the last five decades, as I was saying, with paper. Paper, emails. Now, on top of this, with paper, we have crew members from all over the world, and we speak 54 languages. 54 languages. Now, with all this, how will be the communication? So let's say that's how we represent it. <laughs> so let's say there is a problem with lobster, which in fact we had. So the product they bought and delivered to the ship from corporate office was not good enough. Now, the ship found it while they were cooking food for the passengers. And there was a problem in the product. By the time this message reached shore office and they found the similar problem that's happened to all the other ships, and they took a remedial action of getting the next batch of lobster to these ships, 
took them months because to identify this problem and making a remedial action, buying it, because it's all emails and things get lost and they don't, it's, it's very difficult. And which all amounts to a lot of wastage and it runs into millions. If you do it right, if you do it, forecasting is done right, then since menus are where being sent back and forth using emails, uh, the menus were mismatching and the recipes could be mismatched. Now what happens because of this is we have chain restaurants, you know. So let's say Crown Grill is one of the popular restaurants on board. Somebody likes a steak or made some way and they expect the same when they go to next ship. And it better be the same or it'll be a big customer service issue. Because we want to keep the quality of the product between the ships that you visit, between the restaurants that you visit, it's a big thing. Now, everything with this affects the revenue. And of course, my, that's, that's what we're trying to avoid. So this is a problem that is given to us. As a whole, just want to reflect back on what we are attempting. This is a complex problem. So many people, 300 plus restaurants, or 200 plus, 250 plus restaurants, food from all over the place, 54 languages spoken, all paper, uh, managed with paper. This is a typical case where we would say, this is a case for digital transformation, right? So what did we do? And this is where it's a Drupal conference. So we did it with Drupal. So this is a story of how we did this transformation using Drupal. Of course, we used Angular, Couch, the decoupled interface. And we knew and we know Drupal for the last 10 years. Drupal has been powering our uh, guest experience platform uh, for the last five years. And Drupal is living on board all our cruise ships, 17 of them with, a, with a, the master Drupal in Showside, and every ship has a Drupal instance running. We had other presentations where we covered this thing. But what did we have to build with Drupal to face this problem that we are fa facing about food and making it standard? We had to build this. I'm not expecting everyone to read this, but just going over, what we built was Princess at Sea, which, we, which is our guest experience platform, as I was saying now, we built a digital signage platform for outside the restaurants for people to see what is being served. We have a printing system where digital data is used to physically print. There's a print shop on board to print restaurant menus and newsletters, so we used Drupal and services to provide data and build um, the menus. There is another session that my colleagues did yesterday about Canvas. This is, explains the Canvas suite, which is our print system. Next one we did was menu management system, which we had to create because we set 300 menus. We had to manage it, standardize it. There's a menu management system. There is a menu scheduling system because a menu is not same every single day. There is a recommendation from Showside how the ship should manage menu. So there is an intelligent system that we built to do a menu scheduling for the ship to make it easy. We also built uh, a room service. That's where the menus are used to do transactions. You could request for room service. That's pretty fascinating. We also built a reservation system for taking orders for our reservation orders from customers. We did table set order system. That's also built. Uh, and part of this platform. We did a kitchen display system. It's not a regular kitchen display system because we are talking about thousands of people and the orders are in hundreds. So it's a bulk kitchen system which is not readily available so we had to build it. Then meal count system to know what has been cooked should go back to the customer so that's been counted well. And there is a chef planning system that we built which also we'll show you as well as a production system which gives tickets to the butcher, the vegetable place, or all the production units uh, to bring food to the galley. We'll go, we'll put a context around it, like what we are talking about and in a context of a restaurant. This is what we did. Now, going from left to right, if you see, the first is room service on the top left. That's one part. Princess at Sea, where the guests can see the menu and order for room service in, in case they want. There is a digital signage system where the guests can see outside the restaurant. Inside, there's a table order system and table assignment. 
two. There's a food and beverage office on the top. They have a view of what is happening in every restaurant. Um, then the chef office where they can plan for food in every galley. The meal count system, the kitchen display system, and the butcher shop. This is the contextual view of how you can look at a restaurant and see what we have done. We'll post this uh, uh, in uh, uh, the, uh, the site and so you can take a look at it in, in detail. Now I'll give it to Davis to just go over uh, the menu management side of things. Uh, by the way, if you have any questions, please talk to us, uh, come up to the mic and uh, ask a question. We'll be glad to answer those as we go along. Thanks, Wu. So, as of now, we have seen the problem which we are facing and an overview idea of what we have built. Uh, I'll go in detail in each of the sections which we built and how we achieved it and how is the connection made using Drupal as a backend system. <clears throat> so, uh, when we looked to the entire problem, one thing which we came to know is like we were lacking uh, the di digital format for anything, like for restaurant menus or menu items. Just to be aware of, like, menu item is not a Drupal menu item. It is a restaurant dish. It's a plate, okay? <laughs> so just keep in context. Um, so the first thing was, like, the, the main basic pillar to build the system was the menu items. And we didn't have the menu items digital in a digital format. So using Drupal, as a backend, we created a menu item system which had like the menu names, descriptions, and all the meta tags information, which could actually, you know, look when you look at a menu item, you could say, like, okay, this menu item has this kind of allergens or this kind of dietary or this kind of intolerance. So all these informations were stored in the backend system of Drupal. So in this way, we could create like uh, when we took an account, like there's like more than five thousand menu items which they had in the entire like 17 ships. So that is a basic first step which you had to take forward. So we did that. Then the second step when we looked to it was a collection of menu item is a restaurant menu, right? So that is the second step which we had to build. So when we did the first step like creating a menu item, what we did is like we have a, we, the, so how the system works in our scenario is like we have a show set instance where the short set admins can create the menu items, and it has been replicated into the 17 instance of our ships. This, 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 uh, this replication has been done using the migrate model, uh, Drupal's migrate model, which was very helpful for us. And we also have Lingotech, which has been attached on the top. So like our system, we support nine different languages. So we use Lingotech heavily to translate all the menu items. So a guest who's coming from China can ch see the menu in Chinese, or a Japanese guest can see it in Japanese. So, so the process, what happens here is like, the show set admins create a menu item. This menu item has been sent to Lingotech for translation, and it's coming back to the show site system. And using Drupal's migrate model, it has been sent to all the different ships. So that's the first step which we did. The second step is like, collecting all these menu items and creating a restaurant menu. So, I'll go to the next slide. Yeah. So, in, in our, yeah. Yeah. A question. Sure. Was a menu item one food? Uh, yeah, one plate. A plate, plate could have steak, green beans, potatoes? Yeah, so that, that is a plate. Yeah. That's a menu item. Yeah. Food. yeah. The menu item could have sub recipe, if you look at, that's an exact example that, that it could have other sub items to make that dish. The main menu item is a one line item in, in, in the menu, and you could have sub recipes. Sub recipes could have ingredients. It's a complex problem. Uh, <laughs> we are trying to, we didn't, like, we, we didn't go that deep. We could definitely go and show you all of that sides after uh, this yeah. demo is covered. We had to cover a lot, so we are trying to like, skip some of the uh, areas. <laughs> so, talking about restaurant menu, we had four different kinds of restaurant menu. Okay, and, the fur and, and creating the four different kinds of menu was not an easy task for us because it is like four different scenarios which they were using in the ship. And the first one is what you see here is the static menu. So static menu is basically, uh, for example, take Cheesecake Factory, which has the largest number of menu items, like 250 menu items. <laughs> so 
it's like constant like throughout the season or throughout the uh, throughout the year so even in ships we have specialty restaurants or the room service menu which is constant uh, which does not change to entire year and that's what this kind of static menu is being used if really if, if we had to only create this kind of menu it was a quite simple job with drupal but moving forward with the complexity i'll go with the next one that is that is the special chef special menu so what this is like <clears throat> we know in ship there's a lot of events happening right and say it's somebody's wedding happening so a guest of 300 who comes for the wedding they have to set a different menu for the wedding they can't give the normal food so they go and request to the chef saying that we need a it's a special occasion and we need a special menu so it it is like planned like a voyage before when they give this request to the chef and he asked with all his ingredients with him he has to create a menu for that particular guest or say if a guest of like if a guest of 300 who are vegans were coming into a ship we have to accommodate that accommodate those guests by making a special vegan uh, menu for them so this is made on fly not one fly basically it's done on a previous voyage so they can plan for just one voyage before but these menus are not set as not done from the show side, it is done in the ship itself. So that's the second kind of menu. Going to the third kind of menu is an ad hoc menu. So, so you know how is buffet, right? And in the ship, we have voyages which is lasting from three days to 100 days voyage. And you can't serve the same food for all the 100 days in the ship. <laughs> so we have to keep on changing the menu. And that's when this ad hoc menu comes because Say, it, we, uh, you can think like we can create this menu beforehand, but the problem is we have, the menu has been created based on demographics, based on the ports you go, based on the itinerary, uh, whether all this has been taken into consideration and based on all these parameters, we have to create this menu. And this menu is only done on the ship side because they have the rights to do it. And moving forward is the most complex thing on the menu, that is the menu sequencing. Talk about menu sequencing. So this is for the main dining room. This is where the most of people eat every night. Now, menu sequencing is, say, an example here. The day, it's like, say, a four-day voyage. We have Italian, Asian, American, Mexican for day one, two, three, four, dinner, let's say. Now, the ship has, based on where they are, what time they come into a port and what time they leave the port. So, for example, the ship is leaving at 10 p.m. at night and the chef wants to make sure that the passengers enjoy this food, they would switch the menus between days. So what happens is the show side will give a recommendation just for planning purposes, standard menu saying that this is what your recommendation is, but the ship has an override capacity based on which region they are, what's the weather condition, they could switch menus. This we call it menu sequencing. This is a task they do in the ship. So we had to build a system which gives a flexibility for the ship to control what they do, as well as have show side the visibility of what is happening in the ship. So that was a very tricky thing to do, and we kind of achieved it. I think we did achieve it. We'll show you a demo um, right after this. This is the first part of the demo. This is one part. If anybody has a question, this is a good time to come up and talk. You can come up with this, uh, the mic if it's possible. Thank you. Uh, so you want to show the? Um, so, I think I'm understanding that you're doing uh, ship, to, sorry, short to ship communication with the migrate module, um, and I'm wondering what the contingency is on the ship if that breaks down, if you lose connectivity or the migration fails for some reason. Um, as I said, the ship has Drupal instances on board, so it's not necessary that we have designed everything with the assumption that there could be connection problems. So in most cases, we have done so much on migrate update that it only transmits a little bit. Um, there are good cases where the ship is disconnected for a couple of days, but we have come to a process where ship can run independently. So that's how the system, entire system was uh, designed. We can talk to you about that detail offline, but yeah, that, that's how we have done it because we knew going into the project, that's the uniqueness of our project is it is built around failure. Um, that's how we architected it. It is not like a, a cloud instance where you know there, there is connectivity, only in the rare cases that Amazon will go down, but you still have connected. Our case is not that. 
it is very much possible so that uh, it, the connection will go down regularly. So it's a, it's a different architectural thinking that we had to do. But we took all those from what we built on Princess at Sea, the other application that I was talking about, other guest experience application, we had built those uh, in, in for the last five years. So that's what we're gonna do. We also have a session tomorrow, it's a good plug for you, Nate, uh, which is we are talking about our DevOps uh, methodologies of how we implemented DevOps uh, to deploy to these uh, remote environments. So we, last year we did around, around 3,000 plus uh, deployments to the ship. Every week we have two deployments that goes in. So check that out in tomorrow's session in Nate. It's called um, uh, the Real Life Stories of DevOps. So you might have more information there. Um, so going back here, let's focus on a couple of things here. There's a lot of things uh, afterwards we can go and talk about it if you want to see it. One thing I want to talk about is the menu item. We go into a menu, and one thing to note here, we, the admins here are chefs. So we had to redo the entire admin theme of Drupal. Everything is custom built. You'll see a lot more technical, if you have technical questions, please, please feel free to ask. But everything is custom built so that it's easy for them to see and understand in their way. So it is built with them. So here, a menu item. They click on a menu item. And if you see, there's a list of menu items. And if you click on edit, uh, we have around 5,000 of them. We had to redo the search somehow to bring it up much quicker. The contrast is not very good, but at least hopefully you can see. There's a menu item name here, uh, which we uh, define menu items. There's a short name that is for the waiters and the galley because they don't know the Italian name of a dish. And they're not used to doing that. So they have uh, a, a chicken item, you know, the chicken dish. That's what they know. So there is a short name and the passenger friendly name. So that's for the galley. When we found that you know, they don't understand exactly the, the long Italian definition of a, a dish, we had to change it and create something for them. Uh, then there's a description. All of this is translated, as you see on the top, uh, into nine different languages using Lingotech. Uh, then we can add uh, the SKU numbers, the pricing, also categories of which menu category it falls into. We used a module called Chosen, where you could quickly add, because the same item would be a salad, would be named as uh, differently in an Italian cuisine versus a Mexican cuisine or uh, Asian one. So it could fall into different category names. Um, they also have subcategories, all the proteins, the lifestyle choices. We in fact have alligator protein. Okay. <laughs> So we have all of this, as well as the, uh, the regions. So there are region-specific menus, like a baked Alaska is available only in Alaska, so it is targeted only for Alaskan region. So we can target by region, by ship, all and by menu. So specialty items will show only in the dining rooms, uh, fine dining rooms. So those things are also built in as a menu item. It also goes much more deeper of what are the sub recipes, as the gentleman is saying could be the salad, you know, that, that goes much more deeper in a different section. But going back, uh, restaurant menu. So this is where they create the master menus, where they pick a menu, wanna create one? So all they do is, uh, in the ship, if they wanna create a menu, they just select the voyage. It's very limited, but it's also controlled. Um, and they have freedom to add stuff to. So they pick an itinerary day, so they say it's an eight day voyage, they pick day seven, and the dining location, we have so many dining locations in one ship. So we pick main dining room, and we're talking about which meal time, say dinner. This is all custom created for the admins, it is not even for, for the guest. Now if it's called, it's called, and the menu name, so they have all the master menus that we call from show side. So it's an Italian menu. It's much zoomed in, but you can see this. This is a menu that is built based on the taxonomies added, the tags added in the background. It builds a menu for them, based on the region they are. It just builds a menu for the ship. Now here, they can review this. They can move around things if they want to move um, items in the, uh, in the menu, or they can remove one. 
because they, they have an ingredient problem. They could not pick up a chicken from a port, but still they want to add uh, another, say, oh, they got uh, gnocchi, so, oh no, zucchini. So they add a new item. So we had to rebuild the whole uh, the interface so that it's easy for them to understand how to build a menu. They can also add sections, you know, move sections around. <clears throat> so in case they want to add, so if you see dessert can be moved up or a section can be removed. So it's like pretty much a layout system, which is a chef friendly layout system that we had to build. Also searches also, so search goes through and searches the 5,000 of our menu items. It is not limited. So, <clears throat> so this is how the menu was done. Uh, move, move forward. So on the ship, this, we talked about the menu sequencing. This is where they select what menu goes in which day. And this is what they do once for the future, future voyage. They pick a, pick a itinerary and then pick a dining room. So it shows what has been recommended from uh, show side. If you see, it is a voyage, it says it's day one, San Francisco, arrival time, departure time. What is the recommendation from uh, show side? This is all the different meal times. It shows D1 is a recommendation from show side. Ship can change it to some other uh, menu based on, so they change it to chef one, it actually highlights for them and says you have switched it. And in case they want to make a change, they can click a change and they can do the same thing that I said, modify that menu for that day. So this change happens only on the ship for that one day. It does not modify, it's a node copy that happens. So it creates a copy of the node and then it lets them modify that. It is saved. So the, the ship will have a menu. However, that information is immediately transferred back to show site saying that there's this change that is happening in this restaurant for that day. So all of this information is fed back to show side so they can plan accordingly what is happening and check with the ship if there's a costing implication. So all this information gets kind of real time based on the connectivity, but they have a dashboard to see what all changes happened. So we built that entire back and forth system. Now moving on. So at this time, they go back and assign, that's the on, only thing on a regular basis on the ship do is they go in every restaurant and make sure that the menu for the next voyage is the same. And once that is done, every dining location will have a menu assigned. So that's the first step that we did. This is where we use Drupal heavily. And from this point, it kind of distributes itself. So if we go to the next slide, ladies. Um, hopefully it shows up, yes it does. So as I said, the menu was assigned now based on each day of the voyage. Now it goes into Princess at Sea for passengers to see the menu for that day so the passengers can see, the guests can see the menus uh, for that any dining location for that day so they can choose where to go. As well as we have built for room service and everything, we have built uh, the transaction into it so they can order for room service. That, are, that is also controlled. We built an entire system for that. Uh, digital signage as we talked about, the canvas, as well as the production side. Now, going back to room service, you want to talk about room service? You can talk here. Yeah. So, as you all know, like room service. So, if you go to a regular hotel, you get your, um, like you see a menu card sitting in your room where you have to place an order for your next day's breakfast or any other room service items. So, for the last 50 decades, Princess was also doing the same thing. They give you a uh, menu card in your room where you have to tick what items you want for the next day. And, or you can use the telephone to call the room service station and say what you want for the next day. So since we had the menus in our system, we thought why not make it digital? And that's when we converted the first kind of menu, the static menu, into the uh, digital platform which we call Princess C. So the guests can come in and place their order for the entire voyage. And this system was built in Drupal where they could see the menu and place the order. Then we created a room service system where this menu will go to the room service station and they can process it, yeah, they can process the orders. The good, the, one of the interesting thing which we did there is like all the orders which were coming in could be printed out from a thermal printer 
And based on that, they could sort orders and do all the stuff using the sorting system which we built. And this was done using Angular over there. So in a given day, we deliver around 500 breakfasts to the cabins. Now, we had to build a delivery system too, uh, which we did. I think we're talking about so many systems, but yeah, <laughs> it's a lot. Um, where the person who is in the bell box, which is a room service station, they can orchestrate what is happening. And when the waiters, we have 10 or 15 waiters based on the day, will go and deliver food, they kind of know what happens. And when they have delivered, they have a fulfillment message that comes back to the uh, room service section. So they know exactly, and the customer experience is kept. So that's what's done. I'll quickly go to the next one. We also did a <coughs> reservation system where earlier the chefs did not know how much they should plan for. There's how many reservations were there. They had to call back to the dining line. There could be 100 people coming to the fine dining restaurant, or um, it could be like 80. They don't know, but based on it, they could plan. So now we, we connected that to the dining line, is what they call. So the reservations is streaming in live for the chef to make decisions. We also created uh, the table side assignment. So when you walk into a restaurant, um, the, the restaurant manager can assign you a table which sends a message to the waiter, because it's a huge restaurant. If you can imagine, it's like 800 people sitting in a restaurant. Uh, so a restaurant manager assigns a table to you, and uh, so the, the waiter knows somebody's coming to the table, how many of them are coming to the table. He can arrange the table if he wants, make sure everything is good so that the best experience can be provided. Uh, as well as there's a digital table side order system that we built. Again, we'll have time to show. We'll show all those things. So, um, that was also built where they can quickly take order. The order the chef is taking gets streamed into the galley for the kitchen display system. So it'll be like 150 steaks. Uh, so something like this, very simple, but all the orders coming in from the different tables stream into one screen for the, the, the chef to prepare. As well as if you go further, the waiter also has a meal track if it is a non-digital place, so they take paper and take a digital system. Uh, so we show a quick video of what happens. This is when there's no uh, fully digital system. They take orders and they mark what is going back out. It's a very simple thing to do, but it kind of connected everything together for the uh, chef. You see there's Davis behind the background. So we go to the ship, work with them, and then understand what they need, and then we build there. So we have one person from culinary who go to the ship and three people from our team. <laughs> because it's, it's a digital transformation. So we help the, the culinary person helps us speak the chef language and we take it and talk to them and build something on board, living in the ship. And that's why our application success is that we never have rework because we work with the waiters, we work with the chefs. We have another video which uh, comes up later where we see how they're comparing notes between the butcher and the chef, which never happened in the past. So okay, moving on, so all the information that's happening from the um, kitchen display system plus the menu, meal count, the, the executive chef who is controlling 16 restaurants, 17 restaurants in his office can know restaurant, which is uh, say Da Vinci, which is a restaurant, ha is running out of chicken because the people there order all the chicken dish. So what action should he, should he take? Should he let the, uh, the, the waiters know that please promote lobster tonight because we have a stock of lobster? Or should I request the butcher to bring more chicken to that galley? Earlier, this used to be used over the phone, they had a call, it's a panic situation. From his office today, he can see what is happening in each galley in a given ship. With that information, it's so easy for him to walk around with his phone, because all responses that we have built, and it quickly place order, the food items will come to the uh, galley and be ready for that. Uh, so this is how it is done. So he, all he has to do is like put a plus 100 for say, how many, I need 100 portions of chicken, which has salads attached to it. So it creates an order for the butcher to create 100 portions of chicken. And it sends another ticket for the vegetable section to bring the vegetables for that plate. It sends uh, another notification for the diary section to bring the diary or cheese, whatever is needed. So every production system gets this notification based on the 
one click of the chef to say, I need to plan for 100 uh, chicken, whatever, and, and that distributes tickets. There's a full ticket order system that brings in this data. So this next one is a video. This is where there's a sheet, uh, just before that, let me explain. Um, this is a butcher. So it's a far, I think it's the first or second time he's using a tablet. <laughs> uh, so, and that's the uh, sous chef. And again, they're placing orders and they're comparing notes. And actually, in fact, the thing what happened is the uh, butcher is correcting the sous chef saying that you ordered the wrong thing. You, know? so, but, uh, you can see there's Davis here and there's Manoj from our team. And as I was taking the video and the Greg from culinary. So, okay. so what is happening here, there he is showing how the orders are placed, and then the sous chef and the butcher is comparing the screens. This kind of interaction, I was so happy to see that because it's a, uh, never happened in the past. You know, they had, like something was happening in the butcher station and something else was happening in the galley. Now it became all standard. They started talking to each other. That's great. <clears throat> now, it's not that. The maitre d' who was controlling the front of the house, every single table, Right? In the normal day, what he has to do is he has to walk to different restaurants with his team, spread out, to find if any table there's a problem. So for a customer is waiting for some, so much time. But when we implement our table set system, with all the restaurants that he has, it's not completely launched, but the idea is he would know every single table in the 16 restaurants, or 17 restaurants, what is happening. Every click is tracked at what course is table number 27 in Sabatini's is waiting, or if the, the guest is waiting for the last 20 minutes and he needs to take a remedial action, he can do it from his office. And this was never possible. So all this information, the, just like the executive chef seeing everything that's happening in the back of the house in his restaurants, plus the maitre d' seeing front of the house for customer experience, all this information is happening in one ship. They can see what is happening in one ship. Show side, all this data gets streamed in from all the 17 ships. So now, when you have so much data coming in, we never expected to see this much data, but <laughs> it's a quality problem. Now, once you get this data, then we can do really interesting things with data. That's where we're trying to head to, because we never had this much data coming in. And we are trying to do predictive analytics, things like that, to even say further, on top of standardization, based on, say, one scenario, say the ship is in Alaska, we have a specific demographic, and the weather condition is this, based on it, we can help the chef. Today it is his knowledge that, okay, I see so many Australians and I know what they would like, so let me plan accordingly. But in the future, with all this data coming in, they, we can predict you know, where, what kind of items you should you plan for, where people might eat. If it is, say, it's rainy weather, you might not have people on the deck. They might be coming into the dining room, so the dining room can get alerted. So, so such, a, such a level of uh, predictive uh, information can be given to the chef. On top of it, food safety is very, very big uh, for us because we need to know what happened. So once we know, the, when, once you have connected the butcher to the store, to the galley, to the waiter, to the guest, if you think the entire line we are connecting, we know who touched the food. So. Uh, if there is a recall for a specific type of item, say cheese has been recalled, we know exactly where it went. And it's much easier for us to track what happened. So it's, and the data in our entire platform, there is no edit button. Everything is tracked. Every click is tracked, so we know exactly what is happening. Training opportunities for the chef or butcher can be tracked. What is happening will be seen. Uh, and that gives us auditability and everything can be traced of what reaches where. And with that, we'll show a quick demo of the application that we have been talking about. It's a, it's a lot, uh, but we'll just try to show some pieces of it. And anybody who's interested, we can sh take it after the session, we can show you much more what we built. And this is entirely uh, Angular-based application, taking the menus from Drupal, 
the itineraries from Drupal, and it, it heavily depends on Drupal, but is completely decoupled. So this, this is the next level, I believe, for decouple is not 100% dependent on Drupal, but is mostly there. But it can do its own thing. It does CouchDB saving this data. So in case something happens to Drupal, Couch will let uh, the application run. <clears throat> so we'll start with chef ordering. That's pretty interesting. So if you see, for the chef here, it's very simple. In his tablet, he can see which day of the day of the itinerary it is, what ship time it is, what voyage number. Shows you the different days of the itinerary, so he can plan for next two or three voyages in advance. So he selects his restaurant. Say he picks Crown Grill, and he picks a meal time, which is dinner, and the entire menu shows up to him. So all he has to do is go through this, see, and then add. Say 50, hold on, uh, yeah, 50 uh, black tiger prawn. So what happens on the right side is pretty interesting. It tells you it's four kilograms of black tiger, uh, the shrimp, the, another shrimp for 2.3 kilograms. It's, it's, it's worth scaling. Based on 50 portions, how much is, will be requested to the butcher? So it's raw quantity. Now, on top of it, like we'll have vegetables and other things added to this list. And also, he can assign a delivery date if they need the meat a couple of days in advance to start cooking, like slow cooking. It, they can assign a delivery time if they want. So they can add it. So it's just add. That, that's it. So the chef did not know when he was planning this writing with paper, all of this in the past. Today, he takes his tablet, picks a day, puts in the numbers, and his job is done. The food will come to his galley. Uh, so he just goes in and puts in these numbers. We see there's another shrimp item. It shows you how much kilograms, uh, and say salads, or any other lobster tail. So they have 30, 50 lobster tails. He can just put this number. If you see, it also shows the system is connected or not. This also let him, because we have a limited Wi-Fi, so the application is having lo local cache, so he can still work, but it will tell them that it is not synced to the system so that the information is not reaching the butcher or not. So the connection is al always shown in the, in the top right, if you can see. And also there's a bell sign, which is a notification. It's like Facebook notification that you get. It tells them, oh, the butcher X has seen your order. So what happens in a service time is say, I'm running out of chicken as an earlier scenario. The, the executive chef says, I need 100 portions um, to be ordered now. It, based on the service time, we know that it's urgent. So it creates another visible notification, take over the entire screen of the butcher, and shows that immediately you need to stop everything and you need to deliver 100 portions of chicken to the galley. And when he says, OK, that notification comes back to the chef saying that the Nate, who is a butcher for today, uh, has seen the order. He's working on it. So this kind of communication also is happening. So this is very simple. If you see, the chef's job is so simple. He just presses a button, and his job is done. This is where we said you know, we worked with the chef, saw how he was working how his process was, and completely did a transformation. And if we go back, so this is, so chef logs in, he only sees his area. For us in admin, we see all the other sections. So on the butcher, when he comes in, he also sees his today, tomorrow, all the days. And he knows, based on if I'm a fish butcher, or doing the fish, he knows what are the orders coming in. If you see in the left, I don't know if you can see the red sign. It tells him the order is not complete. So he clicks on the orders that we put in now for the shrimp, the black tiger shrimp. And he clicks on it. He says Crown Grill has 50 portions of the shrimp to be ordered. So ideally what happens, it also prints a label at the same time. So once he's prepared this, all that the butcher has to do is click the thing. It's a ticket that came in. He completed the ticket. That sends a message back to the chef that the item is ready to pick up from the butcher. It's simple. <laughs> it's extremely simple. But we change the way butchers work because they are hesitant to touch any technology. 
But when he saw this, he's like, oh, his work is done. They have like stacks and stacks of paper. Now it's cutting down because everything is through the, the, the ticket. And the ticket is so simple. Um, as well as if, see, if he has an extra stock, we can have a section called uncommitted. Say he may try to make 50 portions. He has some extra. 10 portions came extra. He just adds that. And it became added. So he has a stock. So next time the order comes in for more, he knows that, oh, in the freezer number three, I have already prepped this um, uh, shrimp, I think, yeah, shrimp, so I can go and take it from there. And he, all that he does at the end of the day, he says the total actual usage. So this gives us all this information for us to um, process. As I said, we go back to the chef, the and also the notification on the right side, if you see, that's coming up, what happened uh, on the butcher side and the chef side. We go back, uh, Davis. We go back to the chef, and I, just, I, I don't know if you recall that I said there is no edit button. Let's say the crown grill, it was, uh, you can add another order for tomorrow. Say 100, I accidentally I clicked 800, right? So it created an 800 order, it's, like a, it's an accidental order. So now he has to remove it, there is no edit button. He has to click the plus sign again and says, oh, in fact, I wanted only 100, so remove 700. So he just uh, says 700, uh, sorry, and remove. So it asks for a confirmation. Says, is it a return? Because I did not use that item in the galley for the evening, so I have an extra that has to go back to the butcher. Or is it trash that I dropped the plate, or overcooked, so it's a trash that happened? Or is it actually a typo? that I, in fact, I'm, I'm, my order is extra. So this is how we track every single thing. And they can put a comment if there's a trash, what happened. So this is streaming in so much data in real time. All this information they're clicking is also streamed back using couch to couch replication. So Shoreside is getting data streamed from, currently it's in four ships. All the data that's coming from every butcher, every chef is streaming in Shoreside and it's Throwing, throwing like so much of good data they never had. One example to quote, which we saw last week, the chef had ordered, say, 100 portions, which was supposed to be 100 kilogram of a specific meat. What we found was the, uh, the butcher ordered 300 kilograms, three times more. And that was happening as usual, as a regular thing, we did not know because they were using it for other purposes. The premium meat was being used, where they should have taken some other meat. Uh, or they had a specific meat for this purpose, which the butcher did not know. But this kind of uh, raised a flag, and it was like an over request for 200 kilograms. It's around, around 400 plus pounds for one voyage. So this is for one item in one ship, one voyage. That's a differential that we have. So it's, it's bringing so much standardization with the standard menus, printing, all that we've talked about. Now, go for table trading. Yeah, we'll, you have any questions? Is it too much? <laughs> so it's table side. Let's uh, see table side if you're, I don't know how much time we have, 10 minutes? Yeah. <clears throat> so table side is also built where you see, it's extremely simple. It's built with the waiters. So we worked with them for a week, I believe. So every day morning, we used to sit with them, and we had a 60 percentage return application. And what we did is we sat with them, made them use every day evening to, like, say, two or three tables. And next day morning, we had a debrief with them to say what worked for them, what did not work for them. And three of us were developing on board the ship. And by evening, we build a couple of features for them, what they ask in the morning. And then we test that in the evening. And this process continued for seven days. And this happened because we had a decoupled environment. Uh, we could do it so fast. And by seventh day, we had almost 90% completed application. The good thing is, we took it to another ship. The waiters, like, oh, this is easy. I can pick it up because it was built, it was designed by the waiters for them. So there is no other system, I believe, which is as simple and they get it so fast. 
Yeah, we go and uh, live in the ship. <laughs> yeah, it's unfortunate because we, we work so much. That, like it's mostly 16 hour days that we work because we have in the, in the kitchen, all we need is food. They'll be like making good food for us <laughs> and we'll just sit and work. <laughs> Um, so if you see there's a sections in the restaurant and they see what tables are there with the color code they can see it's not it's kind of bright that's why it's not picking it but you have tables and what is available is listed there all they have to do is pick a, a section and a table it's done so all they have at the left side is how many guests are listed the entire menu that we did in the beginning is the same menu is being used for table side. So the what the way the um, what the customer is seeing on the digital sign or his princess at sea application is the same one that the waiter is going to use for his table set order. So here it's so quick that they assign a gen lady or child. That's how they identify a big table where they start and go around, and they can add and remove the number of guests if it's needed quickly. So let's say it's two guests, and every click they can see what courses. So it's so easy. If you see the numbers in the bottom are courses, course one, two, three. So if there's a kid in the in the group, and I say, okay, I want my dessert, ice cream, in the first round itself, it can be added. So that's how we have built. And the M is for main course. So it's like one, two, three, four, an M. That's how they understand uh, how the system works so because they designed it. Um, so let's say the order is complete. What it does here is it shows course one, course two, course three. What are the different items? And if there's a mistake, they can go and edit the order, or uh, edit, uh, go back and resubmit it. Or if they want to move items between courses, they can do that too. So they want to move the scallop and the, uh, the soup to the top. It says a guest one, guest two is a lady. And when they're done with their, say, the initially they started the drink, and they're done with the drink, they want to fire the order, they click the fire order, so that you don't have a printer connector, that's why it's showing the error. Uh, it's an actual system. Um, so what it does is, it sends an order to the galley. So the galley says, you know, how many items are to be prepared. So we actually created a printer profile. So printer knows it was a waiter printer, or a galley printer. The waiter printer will show the guest information, what guest is having what. The galley will have a collective information. I want, in the table six, I need five steaks, three of them well done. So it's a, a collection of all the orders. So we did printer profiles on thermal print. So if you see fire order, he can do complete fire orders. It actually tracks the time. This is another request from the waiter because we had so many waiters, if you see, they, want, they didn't want conflict between themselves. They, want, they didn't want to say that, oh, I ordered first, I ordered first. So they, we put a time when it was printed so they can compare the print and see, okay, who did the order first? And they get the first preference so that there's no conflict because this is a feature that came from them. They're so quick, simple things. We built it with them, so it kind of worked. So once the order is complete, Let's say that a waiter does multiple tables. That's what they do, right? They have multiple tables. So they go back and take another table and do a quick order here, same way. So orders were so quick. And submit order. See, there's also a dynamic navigation between the different tables they're uh, looking at. So that's what we built. So if I'm uh, looking at my table number eight, I also know what is in table number six, it's course two. So we know how, how much time before the course was started, how much time the uh, table has been waiting. We also had all this information uh, also is streamed to the Mater D. So if you go to the Mater D view, I don't know if uh, you don't have a view, where the Mater D can see that all the tables from every restaurant tells you that just like in the table six here, it says, in the restaurant Crown Grill, it is table number six, is on course two for the last five minutes. That information is streamed to the restaurant managers and made ready to see what is happening in each table. This is visible shore side, a ship which is in Japan, it's a, a table like in Sabatini uh, is waiting for the last 20 minutes. That information will be shown to the corporate office. 
So <laughs> that, that really is a little creepy, but it happens. So they can see it, because they, the thing is, customer service is very important. They don't want the customers to wait and have a bad experience. So here, we know if we can have flags coming up saying that, okay, 15 minutes, nobody should wait for 15 minutes. So they, we could have flags set up for, and then a remedial action can be taken. Maybe the maitre d' goes up to their table, apologizes, and gives them a bottle of wine. You know, something like that can be done. It's uh, delighting the customer. That's a goal. So, so this is uh, the table side order. Oh, that's an order. <laughs> what do we have next? Yeah. So that's the demo that I want to show. And thanks to Binish, the team member who drew all these diagrams, <laughs> custom drew for us. I made him draw around 30 versions of it. Uh, <laughs> because there's no other way to show what the, the complexity of the problem is. So thanks to him. And um, thank you, everyone, for showing up. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, please uh, come up and talk. Yeah, please, please. A lot of questions. Okay, that was phenomenal, and you guys both deserve a cruise. But here, here's my question. <laughs> Thank you. Um, this is mostly back end, but I'm curious about the digital signage on the front end. How yeah. much work went into that, and did you have to follow any standards for like contrast or accessibility or type size, or, or is there anything that you need to do with that? Very good question, yeah. Um, we initially, uh, so how would I put it? The, it's an yes and no answer. Uh, we did, we did, we, it's a website that we have on the front end. It's an Angular application, which has its own playlist and uh, system that we have built. Uh, the accessibility part we are working on now, uh, because we have a, a, a strict deadline to complete that. But on the digital signage, we have not done the accessibility side of things. So that's an open answer for that. <laughs> yeah. But I understand. We are working on that for the Princess Etsy application. So once that is complete, that's our primary goal. Once that is done, we'll go to other applications. Um, and Princess Etsy is our customer facing the primary application, which is what uh, our Drupal uh, system is. So we are getting there. We are getting there. Yes. The, amazing. Absolutely amazing. Uh, the Thank one you. question. So I'm sure, like with your, uh, your app, you've got a potentially at least user level tracking, same yes. probably with the thing with the room, or do you do any of that with, uh, in restaurant, like where, you know, maybe it's a, I don't know, a key card for the room, or is there anything like that that allows you to la um, track individual user? Great question, too? we could do it, but the objective was not to do it for the main restaurants. Uh, we could, we actually did a demo of using this key card to identify the passenger, but, we didn't want to collect unnecessary information if it's not needed. But for the room service, we know uh, the room number, so that's all we need, which helps in our GDPR thing too, because we never collect any information that is not necessary from the beginning. There's no point collecting all the data for the future in case that we don't do that. And we delete most of the user information within the second voyage, whatever is not needed. So you, you, we don't keep your user information for more than a voyage, and it's deleted. And all the messages that we have, messaging is all encrypted, end to end. So, uh, that's, that was not the goal for the application to track users, but process improvements through data. Well, less from a security question, more from a user delight to be able to say, we see a couple days in a row, you ordered this dessert, and it's gonna be featured in this restaurant tomorrow night. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, here's a special invitation for there, there is a plan to opt in users if they want to do it, um, but we have not reached that point. We could do it, but we scale back first to focus on the entire platform. Now we can go back, yeah, we had a lot, lot that we are coming in. The objective was initially to save money uh, and revenue by standardization, and now it's, it seems like it's much more broader than even what business initially expected. So it's, it's getting much better now. So what are you like what you mentioned here is very much a possibility. Thank you. Good question. <laughs> yes. Hi. Uh, your existing system it's built on Drupal 7 but you're migrating to Drupal 8? Yes. Uh, we are, yeah. 
Uh, are, have you exposed Drupal to with APIs to these exter- these decoupled systems? Right. And that's directly to CouchDB, or do you have APIs on the Drupal side? That, or how did, how did, what's that connection there? Very good question. Nate was a good person to answer this, but I can help. Uh, we had built for D7 custom APIs. Mm-hmm. And we ran into all sorts of problems. Uh, when you're in D8, we in fact started with custom APIs. And in last DrupalCon, and just after that, um, we saw the API, JSON API. So we started uh, re-architecting everything. So we grabbed, grabbed everything that we did. And then we started with JSON API. And that's the method we are going forward. So with your decoupled systems, I think you mentioned that if Drupal is down, they just only connected CouchDB, but they, do they talk to Drupal at all? Yes. Uh, on CouchDB system is a vendor to Drupal. Mm-hmm. So what it does is it takes the information from Drupal and uh, Periodically, it goes and checks for changes in Drupal and updates itself, so okay. that even if Drupal is down, uh, the couch can independently work because we don't want the customer to lose an order. Mm-hmm. That's a bigger problem, so we had to change that that level to have a d- different copy in couch to make sure that's happening. Awesome. Thank if there's you. any more questions, can we have them outside? We just have to flip the Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.